Hey, good evening everyone. Pastor Brett here. Okay, so this is what I grabbed from Ollie's today. And uh, I did uh, a video from inside the store, but as I said earlier, I had to take it down because uh, there was some advertisement. Um, their slogan was used over the loudspeaker, and that happened once before. And the video then was uh, um, partially banned um, because of... Uh, a violation, a contractual violation. So, um, so I just saved myself all that trouble and deleted the video. So, here we go. This is what we have. Um, these are a couple of Bibles. They're, they're, these are excellent Bibles. Two excellent study Bibles. Um, and uh, I would, of course, lean towards this one more, but... This is a great study Bible. I wish they did this in the King James Version. This is a phenomenal study Bible. Um, so we'll look at the two. Uh, this is the King James Study Bible, full color edition. Beautiful, trustworthy, timeless. This, however, folks, is the same Bible um, that Fishman Loves Linux won. However, um, this is the updated version of that. Um, he has the old, original, Liberty Annotated Study Bible. And uh, Liberty University gave the rights, they sold the rights to Thomas Nelson, I believe it was. Thomas Nelson took and did a couple uh, of uh, updates. This is the second, this is the last update. It's a full color edition, King James Version. You see Thomas Nelson. Um, it is, um, move this over here. And you have uh, a forward, then a letter to the reader, um, contributing editors, and you see names of um, these people here. Um, some of these were professors of mine in a uh, seminary that I went to, um, and uh, Elmer Towns, um, for one. Um, and then... Um, you have your table of contents, um, books of the Old and New Testaments, how to use the King James Study Bible. Um, this is, um, like I said, this is a great Bible. You have your keys um, to understand the scripture, and this one here tells you about the Holy Spirit and creation. Um, doctrinal footnotes, they call these. Then you have your personality profiles. You'll see a little picture like that in the text, and it'll tell you about a particular person that it's talking about, um, male or female. Here you see the archaeological discoveries, okay? Um, you see there are archaeological sites. You'll see a picture of an archaeological site. They'll tell you a little bit about that archaeological find, and uh, it's really, it's, and it's interspersed throughout the text. Your cross-reference section Tells you how to deal with, you know, the notes. You look at the verse. You see the note. All right. A bold-faced reference in the center column indicates the chapter and the verse, which an entry applies. And it just tells you how to do it. In-text maps um, tells you how to use the center column references. Again, some more there. Um, more about using it. Doctrinal footnotes. Introduction to footnotes. Um, this is, um, these are the notes, tells you where those notes are, what the topic of those notes are, and these are all the doctrinal footnotes, and a little topic, uh, topical study, how to study the Bible, um, and again, you're going to study the Bible in different ways. Um, the Bible, hermeneutics teaches us that the Bible is interpreted in several ways. The Bible is interpreted um, contextually. Context is king, number one. Um, the Bible is interpreted literally. The Bible can be interpreted spiritually. The Bible um, should be interpreted um, um in uh, context, as I said, you can um, take the text um, and and particular verse out of the text. But the verse 
should always be interpreted by the text, and then the text should always be interpreted by the context. The Bible um, can be interpreted as a whole. The entire panoply of Scripture, okay, tells you about Jesus, the Messiah. He's all through the Bible. And so um, you can, you know, learn about uh, the Bible. You can study the Bible topically. You can, the Bible is interpreted culturally. The Bible is interpreted um, historically. Um, the Bible is interpreted archaeologically. There's so many different ways that the Bible is interpreted. But always, 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 always take the scriptures um, and pray before I read. And then uh, when I read the Word of God, I read the Word of God chapter and verse. I go through the Word of God chapter and verse. And then I go back after I read a chapter, I go back over the chapter and we break it down. We look at some words. We do some word studies. Um, exegesis is the best way to study the scriptures. Um, um, we um, look at um, some um, uh, cross references. We do cross references. We look at other portions of scripture um, that compare to it and uh, maybe expound upon it because, as I said, scripture interprets scripture. Always, always, always. Um, you're beginning of your Old Testament. Here is your book of Genesis. Your book introductions are very, um, they're in-depth. Um, the new, uh, the updates are things like this, a picture at the beginning of the introduction. Um, the print is uh, updated. The print is uh, larger and more bold. But in the original one, it's large and bold. Um, 11 point versus 12. This is 12. Um, more on the introduction, okay, to Genesis, and then your text. Your text is separated from the introduction and your notes. Um, Genesis is loaded. The first few chapters of Genesis are loaded with notes. Very, very little text on the page. One of my problems, one of my qualms, one of my quirks with study Bibles is that they can be distracting. I used to like all the stuff. I thought stuff was great. And then as I got older and was more concerned with the text itself... I began to, the stuff began to fade away. The stuff became secondary. And it should always be that. Biblical helps, extra biblical helps are good, um, but they should be secondary. Don't read the notes first. Read the text. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the interpretation. Then interpret it. Okay? Write some notes whether in your Bible or if you had a wide margin or if you have a notebook. Write some notes, thoughts. What do you think it's say, saying to you? And then read the notes and look at the notes. Um, here you see Hebrew word studies, Bereshit, okay? Um, Elohim, they tell you about God, you know. Um, they, you know, they um, give you some you know, exegesis here. And then uh, you can cross-reference verse 1 alone, just itself. Look at all the cross-references that verse 1 gives you. i got to look through the camera because I, I, I tend to look at the Bible and don't pay attention to the camera. And I'll be way over here and I'm reading the Bible and not even paying attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. For you, this is for you, not me. So, um, I am uh, I am truly blessed um, by this Bible. We've had this Bible in the house for years, my wife and I, not this particular one, but um, my wife has this Bible upstairs in a leather cover, genuine leather cover, and uh, that was her Bible for a while. She loved it, but she fancies the New King James now. Well. 
All I can do is pray for her, right? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good, good, New King James is good. But this Bible here, far better. I think it's a better. Now, it's better because of the note, the, the print. I think the print is phenomenal. Um, but, and the notes, eh, the notes. I had my issues with Liberty University when I was there. Um, but I made them known. Uh, we were allowed to express our thoughts. Um, and when we disagreed with the professor, it was okay to disagree as long as we could prove uh, our point. Why we disagree? What's our point? And then lay it out. And of course, you know, I had no problem with doing that. Um, this is a nice Bible. It's, uh, I don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about gilding, scratching the gilding, getting it scratched, scuffed. You don't have to worry about the cover, getting it. This is a nice hardbound Bible. And I like this Bible because it's gray and, and white uh, cloth over board. Awesome Bible. Um, so, I haven't said that. You look through um, and you will see a red letter that is very, very readable for me. I like this red letter. It's a burgundy type of red. It's darker than you see on the camera. It is darker than that. But it's a very readable font. The letting between the lines is awesome, which makes this a very readable font. Um, it's a very readable Bible. It's an excellent study Bible. It's something that will keep you busy for, for days and months and years. And, hallelujah. Um, yeah, this Bible is awesome. You want to make this your Bible. Um, this is a great Bible. Um, and uh, your maps, of course, are just Thomas Nelson maps. It's Smith's own binding, as I said. And it'll last a lifetime. Uh, the cover goes bye-bye. That dust jacket, anyways, I don't like them. I don't give them away. I get rid of them. I send the Bible like that. It has one ribbon marker. It's just a silvery white ribbon marker just to match the Bible. All right. That's the King James Version Study Bible formerly known as the Liberty Annotated Study Bible, and uh, has a lot of features. Yep, thank you, Jesus. So that's that from Ollie's. All right, good stuff, cheap. And uh, I'll put another video up next and uh, show you the new King James Version. Hallelujah. So thanks for watching, everybody. Jesus loves you. We love you. Have a great evening. In Jesus' name.